All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Bobby Hakimi, who is just up the road, up that way actually, uh, in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Bobby? Great. How about yourself? Yeah, excellent. And Bobby's the Chief Product Officer and Co-Founder of Convoso. Uh, he's led Convoso's product vision with a commitment to continuing innovation ever since the company was launched in 2006. Uh, under his product leadership, the, product, the company launched its first conversational AI product in 2018 and over the ensuing years continued to augment the AI-powered capabilities of its contact center software. And that's what we're going to talk about today is AI agents, the future of employee retention and lead gen. So let, let's start off, um, Bobby, because I was saying before we came on air, you know, there's been a lot of uh, noise about agents now because Salesforce suddenly did their big, you know, Dreamforce is now agent force and so on. Um, but explain to people exactly what agents are um, so the people under have a baseline understanding. What AI agents uh, means yes. what that means? Mm -hmm. Well, so, you know, with the recent uh, technology breakthroughs we have, we can now have, you know, full on conversations with an AI. And uh, what that means is through uh, telephony or text messages, we can now communicate with an AI that has, uh, you know, that knows the context of what it is that they're dealing with. So mm -hmm. you prompt the AI by telling it, um, you know, you'll be receiving calls or text messages. Your job is to answer these questions. You have access to XYZ data using this data and the questions that you have. I want you to solve XYZ problem. And if you can't, please escalate the call to a human. Mm -hmm. And so what the AI agent can do is handle a lot of repetitive and, and you know tasks that like it's boring for an agent. Sure. Like, you know, agents repeating the same problem over and over, it's not really effective uh, time for a human to spend. So it handles those ahead of time. Yeah, and so you say because uh, it's interesting. You, you you're saying about AI agents and the future of employee retention, for instance, because you know a lot of people have interpreted these things as, oh my goodness, it's going to take away jobs. People are going to be obsolete. Uh, but like you just said, there was a great example. Is a lot of those tasks that maybe somebody in service does initially are things that are more efficiently done by by an, an AI agent. But talk to me a little bit about how you see AI agents helping with the future of employee retention. Right. So um, for example, with us, we have a product that is an AI agent and it's listening uh, to the call. Um, and while the agent and the consumer are speaking, the AI agent can in real time give uh, the agent the human uh, feedback saying, oh, well, you forgot to mention this to them, or, you know, the, cus the customer is really asking about question X, Y, Z, like they really want to know the efficiency of the solar panel that they'll be getting, and you're not mm -hmm. really addressing it. The answer to that is actually, you know, this uh, information, please present that to the, to the customer. And so like giving a human real-time feedback, which in the past would never be possible because you would have to have one-to-one -one QA people. So, so, in, so just in that instance there, so it's like you're having um, the agent like is active listening beside you and picking up on things that maybe you're missing out on, uh, maybe, you know, because maybe you're not as good as active listening as the agent is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it'd be it'd be things like that. It'd also be uh, it would let the person know, you know, your tone needs to be more upbeat. You're 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 not energized enough. Depending on what the um, you know, depending on what the values are that right. uh, the you know the company is looking for an agent to have, and and you know, it could be that it could be making sure that the agent pushes a certain product or asks certain mm -hmm. questions. Whatever you prompt the AI to do, it will then do that by listening to the agent. So that's a, that's a really interesting uh, concept, the way you've uh, laid it out there, because it's actually, as you said, it's very supportive, which we would agree our thesis around AI is exactly the same, you know, very supportive, allowing people to do what people people do well. But those great examples there about being able to prompt about things, being able to tell you, you know, you need to maybe increase the pace and be a little bit more engaging. Or like you said, you know, there's a there's a product here or a service that's never been offered to this person. It sounds like it could be interesting. So a lot of so in essence, it should be helping the the person actually perform at a better level with their job and actually have a better level of satisfaction. 
yeah, the UX will, will definitely improve. Um, it will help the person, especially the people that just joined the team and are mm-hmm. newly trained. It will definitely help them make sure that they're performing at their best. Um, as well as, you know, the, the AI could at the end of the day, give a summary on an agent and say, you know what, these are the areas I had to help him. These are the areas he was, uh, you know, not knowledgeable about. And maybe there's things that the AI finds out that we haven't even trained our agents on that, you know, now we have that data to look and see why have we, you know, trained our people on this cer- certain information, improve our training. Yeah, and um, and what about what what are some of the things that agents do better than people, and what are some of the things that you think people do better than agents? I think agents are really good at uh, keeping all the data points uh, in mind at the same time to make better conclusions on what the best outcome is for the mm-hmm. call, and humans are better at having that human touch the 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 jokes the personal connection building uh, um report you know like any of those things the the human you know is still for now at least <laughs> better <laughs> at doing that than an ai and you know so humans still have a emotional connection that i don't think an ai can replace no matter how much we train an ai um we just are so random where an AI will still be somehow <laughs> programmed by by some data models. Yeah, and that's the other that's the other consideration too. Is I mean, if you're using an AI product and you're using it with your internal data, right? Your uh, your in, your data needs to be clean and accurate. I think that's one of the things that people are kind of only starting to realize now mm-hmm. because the first level of hype is going, oh, it's great and we can do this and we could just take an agent and overlay it on our database and you go, yeah, but our database is full of garbage. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like training a child, you know, it, yeah. the child will only grow up as good as you give it information and you educate it on whatever it is in the world that you want it to have values on. So same thing with an AI. Yeah. So anybody who's going to do this, like, is going to have to make sure that their data, their up, their procedures, everything is is up to date and accurate. So in a way, it also drives a massive cleanup operation too. Yeah. Exactly. And and you know, like for example, on our on our uh, platform, the AI can summarize so many things much quicker, where it could bucketize the 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 outcomes, and you can say, you know, these are the different outcomes of what's been happening, and then our customers can look at the buckets and start detail in detail looking at the transcripts looking to see what's going on and find patterns and then choose to say this is good this is not and as the ai uh, has more and more successful calls it just uses that as a example on how to know what success uh, and what the best outcome is so over time the ai keeps getting better better and and, and getting uh, trained on more success calls Uh, but but the one thing it's it's interesting people are I mean, I personally think it's also a little scary, like what's going to happen? A lot of things are going to get replaced. But if you think about it in the history of humanity, there's always certain tasks that were replaced by technology and that did not break society. We just became more advanced and started focusing on more important things to, to improve humanity, right? Like remember back in the days, I don't know, 18 or 19, early 1900s, the, the elevator was being cranked by a person. Right. That person's full job was just to move the elevator up and down. Now we just press buttons and or we don't even press buttons anymore. We just tap a key and it goes to the to the floor that we want. So did anything change? No, we just you know, we, we elevated as, as a society to do more important tasks, solving bigger problems, curing uh, diseases, whatever it may be. And so in a short term, yeah, there may be some jobs that are going to be replaced that will cause a shortage of uh, jobs, like, for example, the the Waymo car, I don't know if you, you, you've seen those, the, the driverless cars. Yeah, 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 I'm saying. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, what's going to happen with Uber? You know, what's going to happen with all these people? Eventually, Uber's going to have those cars. So, yeah, it, 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 it will evolve. We will, we have to evolve as, as, you know, as humanity gets more advanced to do more important things. Yeah, and, and I think to your point as well is then the onus is on people is to upskill themselves and look at, you know, what are the skills that I need that certainly AI isn't going to be able to do or the things or how can I leverage AI? So in leverage many ways, the challenge is up to, it, yeah. it's putting a challenge up to people is like saying, yeah, unfor- if you just want one of those jobs where you're just like doing something very routine, mundane, exactly. and you don't care about it, probably not going to be very many of those left. So you might want to maybe challenge yourself a little more. 
Exactly. Get creative. You know, like I use the AI now to do some coding when I want to when I get something done. It almost reads my mind. It writes the code. But you know what it is? It's I don't have to do that tedious programming. I can now be creative. I can really start focusing on creativity rather than doing the actual tasks. So I think, you know, you people have to start really realizing we need to get away from being robots and start being what we really naturally are as children, creative individuals. And so that creativity, unfortunately, you know, through due to school systems or whatever, maybe gets taken out of us as a child from, from a child to, to when we grow up. And now it's the time to be back, you know, a child and get creative with the with the solutions we have. Is it a good quick question? Do you think um it's important that people know that they're engaging with AI as opposed to a, a, a real person? And do you think as it gets better, will they actually care that much as long as they're getting the solution they're looking for? With images and videos, absolutely, because that can get very tricky. You can see a video and somebody made on, on, on you know, a politician or somebody really influential, mm -hmm. and then people start believing that. So I believe we need to let people know on images and videos if it's AI. When it comes to talking to an AI, you know, yes, maybe in the beginning, but at some point we're just going to get used to it. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's it's you will there will be in a very near future a scenario where you will rather talk to an ai than a human an ai has access to data like this you don't have to wait on a phone you don't have to wait for the person the person doesn't have a mood swing they're not slow they're, you know like the, the ai is going to be efficient where we'd be like oh my god thank god i figured out this accounting problem or whatever it means uh, whatever it means what you know we're trying to get to in a really short period of time and i can move on with my life so yeah yeah, no, that'd be that'd be that'd be interesting. Uh, yeah, and like I said, it's going to make some organizations are going to have to clean up their processes, and they're going to realize that some of the some of the ways they've been operating haven't been very consumer friendly. Um, so they'll have to, you know, they'll have to uh, deal with that. Um, tell me about when you get into the area of of lead generation. How can uh, how can AI agents help there? So de definitely the QA, letting, you know, doing scoring on the, the leads, uh, making sure that the data that they're purchasing is quality data, uh, making sure that the agent is performing well. So QA on data and agents is really key. It allows them to focus on the lead sources that are performing the best by analyzing the conversations. And then also, you know, overflow calls. When an inbound call comes and somebody is returning a call, you know, again, the, the, the very basic questions we we want an AI to handle those calls, and depending on what the outcome is, if the person is really upset or or they need more information than AI can handle, we then have the AI escalate that call to a human. So this way, the human again is busy dealing with more important conversations rather than mundane, you know, uh, questions that that could be answered easily with an AI. Right. So just you're saying like in cases like that, if it was just to say X, Y, Z has been solved and this shit's, here's your new tracking number. There's no need yeah. for a human to do that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I'm at the end, I don't really care. I want to know that. Okay. Everything's fine. I've got a new exactly. tracking number. Right. Right. You want, you want to make sure things are getting done as, as, as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing in the lead gen uh, industry is that uh, due to regulations, um, the, outbound call cannot be done with an ai and if, and if you want to do that there have to be really strict guidelines that you have to follow so a telemarketer in the near future will not be replaced with an agent uh and even if there, that was the case it would be again for a short period of time and then once it becomes more complex problem like strategic doing strategy having conversation with which plan is better and really like trying to like you know um brainstorm i think even though the AI may be able to do that, it's more, I would prefer to do that with a human. Because yeah. I feel like there's an emotion and that person will, through their emotion, tell me what they may believe is best rather than just statistics. I believe based on your information, statistically, this is the best choice. Maybe, maybe not, you know, nobody knows. So I think that part should and will stay with humans um, and, you know, that's that's really what I think is that's going to happen. Yeah, and and I think you know, with the, there's always people who are going to maybe implement this, and I would say in an incorrect fashion. There's going to be some people who are going to be like when, you know, when uh, voicemails and phone trees first came on, and company a lot of companies said, "Oh, this is a fantastic 
fantastic opportunity to never have to speak to the customer, right? right. Um, I think there are some, I think there's always that danger is when you implement it that you start to look at what's convenient for you as opposed to looking what's convenient for the customer. And I think it's, there will be a danger of some people using it to hide behind as opposed to, as opposed to enhance the experience. Yeah, there, there, there's always those those that you know really get excited over it and say, you know what, I don't need any human capital because <laughs> managing people is not easy. Mm -hmm. Managing AI yeah, just takes a couple of knobs, you know, on mm -hmm. off, do this, and it doesn't complain, it doesn't call sick. So yeah, there, there will be those people, um, but again, you can't replace the human touch. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a difference between me being in an office and having seven, eight, 10 humans around me than having 17, seven, 10 robots around me. I'm still going to want the human. Yeah. So that human interaction, I think we will always want to desire to some extent, and you can't get away from that. Yeah. So what, um, what, tell us a little bit about uh, the, you know, your product and what are some of the AI elements that you've integrated into Convoso? Right. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a sales and marketing tool that enables uh you know companies that get form field like, you know you go to a website you're looking for insurance um, right whatever um, website you go on or or healthcare or solar panels whatever it may be that you're looking for you fill in the information on the website that information then goes into our platform and our platform places a call out to you um if you're not available maybe leaves you a message sends you an email a text message or whatnot and you know lets you know that hey we're reaching out based on your inquiry and um so while that's happening during conversations and after conversations, the AI takes the either either a recording of the call and processes it and then scores it, gives a summary at the end of the day. You know, we, we placed you know a company with let's just say 500 agents, right. they placed millions of calls. So it's impossible for a human to go and mm -hmm. listen to all the calls or even transcripts. Mm -hmm. The AI then will take all of that, summarize it, and tell them where the inefficiencies are, inefficiencies are, and then gives leaves leaves it up to a human. To decide, okay, what am I going to do with this, right? Am I going to uh, sell this product because it's not really converting, and I'm buying all this data that's not selling, or maybe there's areas where I can improve the the um, you know script yeah. to improve the conversions on the sales process. So things like that, as well as real time coaching, is where we're seeing the AI, and then we have uh, Volso uh, Volso AI, which is that agent AI where you you know use it for whatever purposes, either you transfer a call to the AI and say, you know what, I'm going to send you to an AI and the AI will grab all the information that I as a human don't want to because it's sensitive. It's yeah. social, you know, like other sensitive information that a human shouldn't collect. It could do that. It could take overflow calls and just have a real time conversation with you that honestly sounds really cool and really freaky at the same time because it yeah. sounds like a real human. You, you, can't, you can almost not tell that it's an AI uh, agent talking to you. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. But everything you've said there again, it's what I like about it is it's all the AI is there to make the the employee better at their job, right? More informed and the customer experience enhanced. So it's a, it, it is that win win, right? You know, you're helping your you're helping your employees be better, focus on higher level activities, giving them insights, having them uh, having them yeah, even overflow and stuff like that. Uh, it, it that all then translates into a better customer experience. Ultimately, exactly. That's that's mm -hmm. the point. We want to improve that experience. Mm -hmm. So, where's where do you putting on your your uh, your futurist hat or taking out your crystal ball? Where do where do you see this going in the next say twelve to twenty four months? I because normally you'd say like where do you think this is going to go in the next five years? But we changed like so rapidly now that I think a year to two years is probably quite a long window. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I think this AI technology we have will be plugged into everything to a point where it's just normal. Right. You know, Apple. I think they're releasing their new phone. It'll have that AI built in. It won't be yeah. that you know annoying Siri. Hey Siri, do this. Mm -hmm. I found the search on the web. No, I didn't want you to find the search on the web. I actually want you to do something. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's going to be really interesting to see that integrated into our day to day uses of technology services and whatnot um so I, I see that happening you know rapidly everywhere everybody's gonna to some in some way integrate uh ai into their platforms and it will make things easier um but at the same time you know it's like how many of us know how to read a map 
Oh, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Physical uh, map with the with the compass. Uh, yeah, exactly. Or how many of us have a good sense of direction, right? Yeah. So like, so there's all. I like to think I, I like to think I do, but my wife tends to tell say differently. <laughs> you know, it's like so. So so th there will be a muscle that that we may not train anymore. And so what happens if we rely on AI so heavily that we may not know how to do something on our own anymore? Um, I you know. I, I see that potentially being a problem, but then again, if that was the case, you know, what are we going to do with our cell phones? We we make it work. We have our cell phones. They yeah. work. You know, they might have yeah. outages here and there, and then at that point, we're stuck. We can't place the call. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, not that we even use them for calls anymore. Um, yeah. but uh, no, it's interesting. It's a fascinating point there. Yeah, it's something to think about for sure. Is about when we get them to do th do things, and then we forget how to do them ourselves. That is an interesting conundrum. Well, listen, also, Bobby. Sorry, go ahead quickly. Also, I think that the 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 question we should all be asking is: at some point, the AI will solve most of everything. It'll mm -hmm. cure it'll cure uh, diseases. It'll do everything. It'll make life so easy that we really have to think about what is our purpose next? Why are we here? What are we going to do as a society when we have the AI have solved every one of our problems and made our lives easy? So that's something to think about, you know, what that would be like. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we'll leave it on that because I'm going to leave it hanging with that very, very fascinating, uh, fascinating posit there. Um, all of Bobby's information will be below this video. But before we go, do you tell people a little bit more about you and Convoso? Yeah, so um, I've been uh, in tech since I was 14, so I don't know, 20 plus years. Um, we, we do provide a uh, sales and marketing acceleration tool that uh, uses, you know, telephony, text messages, and uh, emails to reach out to your customer base and to do follow-ups. And it does that in an in a automated way at scale. So if you want to reach, you know, several million people, you don't have to wait weeks and months to do that. You can do that in a matter of a day. And, and that's, you know, we're targeting mainly to lead gen uh, yeah. customers. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Bobby. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.